So the big secret to have a nice relationship with a bald eagle, to make its training massively stress-free for both of you, to have a bald eagle that doesn't bite your face, imagine fitting on your own a transmitter to this bird's tail. I've got to reach around here. And I've got to get my hand round now. I've only got one hand right now. Get my hand round to its tail. Look where his head is, in my face. I cannot avoid that. It is going to rip at my ear. It is going to spite my face. Even more so when these birds were young and nervous, starting out on their training. Hooding these birds is the key to so much success, so much pleasure working with what is a bitey aggressive species and a very nervous species to start with. It's not easy. His sister was fully parent reared. She went ballistic the first time she saw a hood. She couldn't be hooded as a traditional falconry bird, sort of on the first few days of being handled and worked with. She hated the sight of it. He was, um, not parried, he was hand reared by the breeder along with a sibling. He went to shows a little bit when he was a chick. He came to me at about 20 weeks, fully grown, fully feathered. No, no work with the hood as he grew up as an imprint was done. He went ballistic the first time he saw a hood. Absolutely, it was terrifying. Neophobia, something new. We couldn't hood him traditionally as we would training other birds of prey at the beginning of training. I stepped back. I did things I didn't want to do. I openly left food with him on his own, on his block in his muse. I wouldn't normally feed a hunting eagle anywhere near its muse, certainly not until it's older. I also had to not do any work with him because he was scared to death of being picked up. He was scared of anything new, a plastic chair, anything. I couldn't start my training because he was so scared of everything, as was his sister. Probably took me three weeks of getting this bird to accept the hood with a really well-known traditional method of making birds to the hood that are scared or difficult to hood. I've mentioned it in other videos. I've wrote a good sort of piece on it in a falconry magazine that you can read how to hood birds that haven't been hooded before that are difficult to hood. It's not my method. Cleverer people than me thought it up. If you can be bothered, you can take the time, slow your training. I know we all want to get the birds flying free. Step back a few weeks, get that hooding in place with a bird that is very difficult to hood. He now hoods like a dream. He is by far the easiest, nicest bird to hood I have got. If you can just step back and put that work in. And at the end of the day, if you're flying an expert level bird, an eagle with all the responsibilities that brings, come on, you should be able to have a bit of nous about you to work around that problem and get it right so it works for the bird. It's changed this bird's life so much more positively. The fact that I can just pop the hood on and do stuff that would either cause me injury or him massive stress. So the key to working with bald eagles, in my opinion, is taking the time at the beginning to what can be a very difficult task, make them to the hood. It really, really transforms your relationship with these fantastic birds. Another big set of problems that arises when you're working with bald eagles tends to be their chewing. So they chew like a vulture might chew. They really use their beaks. Um, sea eagles, fish eagles, their beaks are an important tool, much more so than other birds of prey we fly, other than vultures. So they're bitey. They will use their beaks as a weapon. And they're intelligent birds. And they've got this little, little thing to pick and poke at and chew with and they like to chew anything. Now they're neophobic, they're scared of new things. They also can't resist chewing at new things sort of that they do get used to. So their equipment, their furniture, their jesses, their leashes, telemetry, bells, all things that people often do away with. So people will fly, fly bald eagles and they'll fly them with no telemetry and they'll say, well, it chews it all off. And they do, if you just, if you just try and train a bald eagle and you put telemetry on it or bells on it, it will chew it off because it can't, it's something new on its body, it will chew it off. So, so when it chews it off, you know, I can't fly it with telemetry because obviously it'll fly, sit in a tree and it will chew the telemetry off anyway. All these things can be avoided. It just takes a lot of time. No, it doesn't take a lot of time. It takes a lot of sort of, what's the word, effort, sort of little bits of time because this is how to avoid a bald eagle chewing off its tail-mounted telemetry. 
the first day you catch the bird up from the parents or, or however, maybe it's an imprint like Wurzel was, and you fit all his kit, you fit in his anklets, his dresses, so on, fit a tail mount, fit buets with bells on, leather buets around his leg with bells on, and in that tail mount, just, just a tail mount crimp, there probably isn't any point messing around with anything else, fit a big long black cable tie, hanging down just like a tail mounted transmitter would, fit the bells, it'll probably chew at that cable tie and screw it up into a, 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 like an old fashioned telephone line, it'll probably rip off its bells, this is the key, this is the key that makes a difference, don't think, oh next week I'll probably do all that, put it back on, you've got to do it straight away, so there's one thing you can do, of course, forget your training, forget your kit, wait until that bird accepts the hood. That way, you can refit that kit the next second that it chews it off because you can hood the bird. You haven't got to cast the bird, catch it up. It chews off that cable tie. You fit a new one straight away because the bird's hooded on the perch. You can do it in two minutes. You can't see you. You don't have to pick it up on the perch. You can do it yourself. Two hands are free. It's sitting on its block or whatever. Fit a new cable tie, cable tie hanging down from the tower mount. Refit the bells. Might not chew them again. Might chew them straight away. Might chew them a month later. Don't think, oh, I'll do that in a few days. You've got to do it straight away. So as soon as that bird chews something off, it's just there again. And very soon, it'll stop doing it. They still have weird moments, like three years later, it'll probably chew both its bells off. Fit new ones straight away. He's got a bell. That's been on there now for about three months. He will probably chew it off at some point. He'll get bored, he'll have a moment, he'll think, I'll chew that bell off. Put it straight back on. He flies with a tail-mounted transmitter. He has never chewed a transmitter, ever. I'll leave him hooded with his transmitter on, maybe for half an hour before I fly him sometimes, just get him ready. He won't sit there chewing at it because he spent ages picking and poking at a little, a long, not a little, a long black cable tie hanging down from his tail mount. These birds chew their kit. Have a look. His jesses are probably the same thickness that you'd use on a Harris's hawk. It's fine. They could tow a car. It doesn't matter how strong they are. They're more than strong enough. As long as they're thick enough that if he chews at them, he doesn't chew straight through in five minutes flat. They don't, they get all woolly, you can see. Look at that. Not chewed those for ages. In the next month or three months, he'll probably chew off, chew up one of his jesses and I'll fit new ones straight away. No problem tethering this guy with braided kit. Look at the swivel. Don't look at the leash. I detest these kind of leashes. Works for him. But look at the swivel and the jesses. They're nothing special. It's not. This swivel's not something that the will anchor the Titanic. You're not, they're not gonna break that kit if it's quality. It's all about what they'll chew. As soon as they chew anything, remediate it straight away. You can definitely fly bald eagles wearing transmitters, bells, an ordinary size kit, nothing oversized. It's just breaking that habit. If you let them chew and you let them chew for days and you don't get round to it, the habit will form. All of that is made possible because he's wearing a hood. Another good thing that the hood allows you to do, of course, is if you're flying a bald eagle in displays, which most of you will be, or most of us are, you can get him amongst the crowd, you can get him ready to fly. He's not getting agitated, he knows he's here, he knows he's gonna fly and get his food. But he doesn't know that, does he? Because out of sight, out of mind. Nice and calm, I can tell you a bit about him if I want to, without him getting wound up. And you can think, oh, well, I don't hood my birds. My birds get to see all that. Well, I can do that as well, can I? Something I can do you can't do. If you're flying this guy at an outside event, or indeed on site, he's gonna row. And I went in my mouth, they dribble. And um, you lose that bird, you not only lose it half a mile away, you've tracked it down somewhere you don't know on, on an out, out of town event. You've tracked it down, it's in a town park sitting in a tree. Great, and get it back. Now you've got to walk half a mile or a mile along a busy road to get back to your event. You don't really know where you are, you've got to go along a main road. You can possibly cause an accident with a, a bald eagle flapping around on the roadside. And more importantly, is your bird really that relaxed that it will just sit still on the hood somewhere strange in a busy town road? Probably not. He will, because he's hooded. This bit of kit is a massive welfare tool. 
and it unlocks training bald eagles in a completely different way than if you try and train these guys before getting them used to the hood. Good boy. Oh, lovely. In the next short video about training words with a bald eagle, yeah, I know, we'll discuss how we train this bird, the basic training, getting him flying free and soaring in the air. Nothing special. We train him to soar just like we do our kites and our vultures. He's an intelligent bird, much like kites and vultures. They learn quickly what you want them to do. So remember, the key to having a really wonderful bald eagle to work with, a really wonderful relationship with your bald eagle, a bald eagle you can fit transmitters and kit without getting bitten, a bald eagle that isn't restless and wound up when you're about to fly it. All of this, the thing that makes Wurzel the nicest bald eagle you'll ever meet to handle and work with, all of this is facilitated because of the fact he readily accepts being hooded. It opens up a completely different way and a much nicer way to work with what can be biting aggressive eagles. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Please like and subscribe. Next time we talk about Wurzel, we'll talk a bit about free flying and that kind of training. Thanks for watching.